Hello, and thank you for joining me for this overview of the features added by Viper Business's advanced product levels. Viper has three of these levels in total, which are antivirus, premium, and endpoint security. The purpose of this presentation is to provide insights on the benefits gained by upgrading from the entry-level Viper antivirus to the fully-fledged Viper endpoint security. So, without further delay, let's begin. While the console itself will look very familiar, it's inside the policies that will find the actual additions. The first of these that we gain from Viper's Premium Edition is an extension of a feature which is already present. Standard browser protection, which was introduced with version 9 and is available on all versions of Viper, provides web traffic protection. This feature allows Viper to protect the system against threats which target the browser itself such as drive-by downloads or browser-based exploits. The advanced side of browser protection, which is introduced by the Premium Edition, allows Viper to utilize a very extensive bad website list to ensure that end users don't navigate to potentially hostile locations on the web. Version 9 also brought about a small but important change to these bad website checks themselves, in that they're now cloud-based as opposed to being tied to the antivirus's definitions. What this really means is that Viper will always be referring to the live list of bad websites, ensuring end users are always fully up to date. This is important due to how frequently malicious developers move between different locations on the web. Somewhat related, the Premium Edition also improves upon Viper's email protection by adding anti-phishing checks. This feature leverages the same cloud-based bad website list to remove any links inside of an email which are pointing to any of these malicious locations. From there, we move on to the software firewall feature provided by Viper Business Premium. Here, we can set up typical firewall rules for specific programs and protocols for inbound and outbound traffic on both trusted and untrusted networks. However, we also have the ability to define very specific exceptions should the need arise. Need to create an exception for a specific program going a certain direction aimed at a specific local port? No problem. In addition to standard firewall rules, Viper Premium can also utilize an intrusion detection system. This feature leverages 449 customized snort rules to monitor network traffic for suspicious behavior on the adapter itself. Supplementing this is Viper's process protection, which guards against code injection. Now, code injection refers to the act of exploiting a running process, forcing it to perform unintended actions. Should there be a valid program that utilizes this, we can exclude it from here while still monitoring for those unknown code injection attempts. The final feature added by Viper Business Premium is the ability to provide patch management for third-party products. The purpose behind this addition is to ensure we keep the programs on each system, which would be at risk for exploitation, fully up to date. Setting this up is nice and simple. We'll simply schedule a time for Viper to scan for which programs are running which versions on a system, and a time for these updates detected as being needed to be pushed out to these systems. Due to the prevalence of exploit kits, especially with ransomware infections, keeping these programs up to date is more important than ever and Viper can greatly assist with this chore. With that, we've covered the Premium Editions, Feature Editions, so let's go ahead and move on to those provided by Endpoint Security. Let's start with this version's most exciting option, Advanced Active Protection. While version 9 introduced a dramatically improved scanning engine, Endpoint Security goes a step further by adding another layer to the live protection component of Viper, which guards the system between scans. The standard active protection will work how we're normally used to security software operating, files being scanned on either execution or touch. Execution scanning, as its name suggests, will scan files just as they're about to run. On access or touch scanning, we'll inspect a file when it's touched, which is simply an action which involves a file. The advanced active protection won't replace this feature, but will instead add another layer on top for additional security. 
I've set up a quick animation to help visualize the process. As we've covered, when a file is run on a system, it's scanned by Viper's standard active protection, as we're used to. The advanced side of active protection comes into play once the file actually executes, monitoring all of the actions the process takes. Should these actions become malicious, Viper will respond with a few actions of its own. First off, the process itself will be terminated and the associated file quarantined. Then, thanks to the list Viper has of its actions, we can undo a vast majority of changes. The only real limitation being as if files themselves have been changed, obviously because we don't have a backup of every file on the system. Finally, all the details regarding not only catching, but also remediating the threat will be uploaded to our definition server, so the next update will ensure all Viper users will be able to stop this threat at the standard active protection level. In the end, my favorite way to describe this feature is simply, it doesn't care what a file is, just what it does. And this advanced heuristics engine provides powerful protection against zero-day threats, as well as advanced malware, such as ransomware. The next feature we're going to take a look at is called device control. And this feature allows administrators to decide which removable devices end users assigned to a policy with this feature turned on are able to access. Each category can have basic permissions assigned such as full, read-only, or no access, but the real fun of this feature comes with the granularity that we can have with the exceptions we make to these basic rules. For example, we could say no one in this policy has access to USB flash drives except the administrators group from Active Directory. Or, since we can make exceptions off individual devices, we can say no one has access to any drives outside of one that everyone has read access to. In the end, this feature allows administrators to be more confident in regards to the external end-user devices being connected to endpoints. On top of control, this feature also adds removable device encryption, with the idea behind it being to make sure that data leaving the network on removable storage devices stays safe. When enabled, Viper will just ask if we'd also like to encrypt removable hard drives along with flash drives. The process itself is nice and simple for end users. When plugging in a non-encrypted device, they'll simply be asked for a decryption password, as well as if they'd like to retain the information already on the device. Accessing the device on another system is also hassle-free. The system in question doesn't need a Viper agent or another program installed. The only real requirement is to use a Windows system and to have the correct password. Should the end user forget their password, however outlandish that concept may be, they can request it reset by submitting two sets of characters to the administrator. The admin will use these two sets to generate a third, which can be used by the end user to generate a new passcode for the device. So, in conclusion, we've reviewed the feature differences of both the premium and endpoint security versions of Viper Business over the standard edition. Just to reiterate, Viper Business Premium provides an advanced level of browser protection, a software firewall, which includes both intrusion detection as well as process protection, and patching capabilities for at-risk third-party programs. Alongside these capabilities, Viper Business Endpoint Security further bolsters security by including the advanced heuristics engine with active protection, as well as giving us more control over the devices connected to our network and the data that leaves on these portable storage devices with device control and encryption. With that, I thank you for listening to this presentation, and stay safe.